Hi, so I am going to show you how to run basic two dimensional example in Damask. So, Damask is a crystal plasticity code, and you can download it from here. So, you can install this Damask code. Uh, this is also only compatible with Linux. So, this is not a tutorial about how to install a Damask code, but I am just going to show you how to run a basic two dimensional example. Okay, so I have installed the Damask and I have created a new folder so you can see this is an empty folder and using terminal we will just go to that folder. So first thing what we have to do is create a microstructure. So to create a microstructure, Damask can create a microstructure so this is the syntax for creating microstructure. So first we will create the seeds to form uh, Veronai tessellation i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that right but to create the random seeds so this is the command to create a random seeds this n20 means number of grains and the grid is basically the meshing so we are using 64 by 64 mesh and one uh, is the c direction so one means it is a 2d so if you want 3d you will type 64 here as well and this will create this file called uh, dot seeds so let me just enter this and now you can see here uh, there is this seed file so if you open this file you will just see <coughs> uh, 20 different seeds with uh, three uh, Euler angles so these are the locations of seeds and uh, these are the Euler angles and again there are 20 seeds now next thing is using these 20 seeds we will create the microstructure so to create the microstructure the command in Damask is this one so here we are creating that microstructure using this these 20 seeds and again our grid size is 64 by 64 so if you enter this now you will see a file which is called dot geom so this contains the microstructure if you open this over here you will see there are 20 different grains then each grain has some random uh, Euler angles and then this is the geometry so this is the mm, grain microstructure so we can actually visualize this visualize this in much better way and in order to do that what we have to type is to create a para view compatible file we just have to type geom underscore check and then the uh, geom file so if we do this it takes some time yeah so now you can see one more file over here which is .vtr so this is compatible with paraview so let me just show you so if we open a paraview and go to the same folder and open this file apply and over here we have to choose surface and over here microstructure so you can see this is the grain grain structure microstructure we created and the important thing about Damask is you can create only periodic microstructures so you can see if any grain is getting cut by a boundary on the left it will appear on the right so it is periodic in all directions the grain which is cut, getting cut by the top boundary will appear over here the corner grain will be on all four corners so now we have microstructure now to run we need two more files so first will be uh, materials file which will have the constitutive material model parameters and one will be boundary conditions so as of now I am just going to copy paste these two files these I already created so you can check the description and you will get the links to these two files so in the boundary condition file which I named as tension because we are giving uh, going to apply tension load in this you can define f dot so here you have to um, uh, define the 
uh, derivative of deformation gradient so here i am i am applying uh, and here i am putting f dot 1 1 at 10 raised to minus 3 so we are applying a tension in 1 1 direction and also what we can choose over here is total time of simulation so which is 200 and number of increments so 400 so these you can play with how much you want and frequency is nothing but after how many intervals you want to save the results so now here there are 400 increments frequency is 1 so we will save the results after each interval and then the material file looks like this so again in material file there will be 20 different grains then what outputs we want so this is just by default so texture uh, stress strain orientation and then this is our material parameters so i am assuming uh, i am using aluminium as a material and we are using the phenomenological power law for aluminium so for elasticity we are assuming a hooke's law but it is <coughs> uh, we are assuming hooke's law and for plasticity we are assuming a phenomenological power law and then you can define different different parameters over here both elastic so these are elastic parameters these are plastic parameters and uh, again in separate tutorial we will discuss what all these parameters and and how you can um, find them out then again it will have Euler angles so that's it that will be your material file so you need four files to run the Damask example material load seed and geometry this is just for uh, visualization so we actually don't need that and now once you have these four files to run the Damask simulation so Damask has its own solver which is called as spectral solver so to run the example this is the syntax Damask spectral and it will use geometry this geometry file and um, boundary conditions from this tension file and it has to have a material file so that material files name will be always the same and one important thing is this is not a finite based element of uh, solver so this is fast Fourier transform based solver and once we hit enter so you can see it will start the simulation and now we have given 400 increments so you can see now it is increment 3 so it will take some time so maybe I will fast forward this okay so now you can see the simulation is completed so 400 out of 400 increments are converged so when you refresh this so you will see this is the output file from the mask so you can see it's almost 1 GB now the thing is this output file is in binary form so you again have to do some post processing in order to get some data out of it so I will show you how to plot a stress strain curve and how to see the distribution of stress and strain okay so now let's do the post processing so I just cleared the terminal so you can see it in a better way so this is our output file and first let's see the stress strain plot so this is the command for post processing so what it does is it will take the output file so this is our output file you have to give name of output file here and then it will just take out the stress and strain at each interval so if you are familiar with abacus it is like the history output so let's just hit enter and this again will take some time okay so post processing is done so over here now you will see one folder so all your post process data will go in this folder so if you open this file so what this file is giving you is the values of all nine stress component uh, strain components and all nine stress components so if you want to plot a stress strain curve what you have to do is just take this column so this will be your f dot value which we um, which we defined in a boundary condition and then this will be your corresponding stress values 
So using these two columns, you can plot the stress strain curves. Just rename this file. So whatever next post processing we do, that will not get overwritten, uh, overwritten on this file. Now let me clear this again. So now to see the stress and strain distribution. So for that, the command is this. So again, the first two things are same. Post results is the command syntax, and this is the um, output file. And now what we are doing is, you know, we are not taking only stress and strain, but we are also considering orientation, texture, grain rotation, that also we will see. And we will separate it on coordinate basis and at the last increment. So 400 is our last increment. So this is more like a field output in Abacus terms. So if you enter this, this should be pretty fast. Yep, done. So now you will see one more file over here. Okay, so this has the distribution. So now we have to visualize this, right? Stress strain curve, we can just plot directly, but you open this file, it will not make any sense. So again, we can use visualize this using Paraview. So for that, first you have to go into this folder and now first you have to create a grid so in order to do that this is the command so this command vtk rectilinear grid will create a grid what is there uh, what we used as an input so first let's just enter this okay so this should have been created one grid file and now we will so this is a paraview compatible file and then now we will add the data in this file so to add the data the syntax is this one uh, every time you can just pause the video and see the syntax so we are adding uh, stress uh, strain stress and all other things as well into this grid file okay so all the data is added if you refresh this it should be now a bigger and now we can visualize this file using paraview so let me hide this file and let's open this one okay so first stream so this is the strain distribution this is at the 400th interval so at the end of our simulation this is the stress distribution and then you can also see grain rotation or texture so texture is basically our initial grains etc if you like this video please show your support by subscribing to this channel which will give me motivation to create more educational videos like these you can also go to channels playlist tab and here you can see all the videos with similar topics combined together. For example, let's say if you're interested in ANSYS tutorials, you can go to this ANSYS tutorial playlist and see all the videos from this playlist. All the codes and files which I use for these videos are also available for you to directly download from this channel's GitHub profile. The link of this profile is given in the description box below. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.